I am notoriously kind of afraid of geese, so this is a big moment for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, tell the people what's going on right now. Well, right now we're sitting here with Pablo. Pablo is, you know, I think we're friends. I'm trying to figure it out. I, I think we got a vibe going. I'm, I'm a little un, uneasy right now, but <laughs> we're doing good. Things are, things are going great. We have a very special guest on the podcast today. We have Ron and Pablo. Ron, Pablo is a, a, a what, a miniature Canadian? Yep, he's a cackler, a minima. That's the smallest of 11 sizes of Canada geese. Okay. So oh, yeah. where did you, how long have you had Pablo? How long has Pablo lived with you? Pablo is two and a half years old. And how it started, uh, we found a, a little goose, you know, that had no mom. So we raised it. His name, we named him Peeps the Goose. Well, anyway, then uh, I even planned on letting it go or giving it away because we did not want a goose. You know, we raised geese back in the day, and, and I was, we had 375 elk, and I was just thrilled to be, have no responsibility, no animals, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, it was 2020 during COVID. So I own the Dairy Queen at Mall of America. We could not go to our jobs because we were locked out of our job. So then I decided to do some good habitat stuff, and I planted 250 big trees, which took the whole summer. Well, anyway, peeps went every, you know, to every hole. He'd inspect the hole and look for worms and stuff like that. Well, anyway, uh, he b just became a human. Well, then uh, all of a sudden one day he was flying alongside my foraler, and I was like, oh, my gosh. So then we went to the lake, and I said, let's see if you'll fly next to the, for or to the jet ski. Well, this lady chased me down, and she said, stop chasing that goose. And I said, he's following me. And she said, I'm calling the police. And I said, <laughs> I said it's my goose. And she says, uh, you got to stop. Stop. Uh, Papa got that wind. <laughs> <laughs> Who farted? <laughs> Might have been the goose. No. <laughs> anyway, um, so then uh, the lady said, you stay where you are. I'm calling the police. I looked at the goose, and I said, ready, ready, ready. And her and all of her rich friends. We took off and the goose flew right up and over and like he almost like, you know, her jaw, her jaw dropped and she's like, come back. And then once they learn, now everybody loves it. But anyway, <laughs> so then we um, Channel 5 News found out about it and they said, can we do a story? So they did a story. And then we were on the show Minnesota Bound. Ron Shera. Ron Shera. Yep. So anyway, uh, then a lady saw our story and she said. You have a, a boy goose named Peeps that you rescued. We rescued a girl goose from a hawk, and her name is Puddles. Would you adopt her? So we adopted her, and then we taught her to fly alongside the foraler. And then we went to Canterbury Downs and practiced Peeps versus Puddles in the Goose Down Derby. <laughs> so you had them racing each other. Who was faster in the practice rounds? It was tough to say because uh, they they did not t totally go around the track. They all, all all the they saw a bald eagle and one took a shortcut and she was she was scratched. You know she got kicked out of the race. Okay, okay, interesting. So Pablo is he is he well behaved? Pablo, yes, he's a gentleman. He's he. So we taught him to fly. Uh, let's go backwards. So anyway, once we were on all these. You know, we got pretty famous on Facebook and that stuff. Well, then the U.S. Fish and Wildlife called and said, where did you get that goose? And I said, we rescued him. His mom died. And the guy said, why didn't you take him to a rehab place? I said, I don't know. Are you familiar? <laughs> He's pissed. Uh, are you familiar with uh, 2020? That's, I don't know if you heard of COVID, but that's where we weren't allowed to go to a doctor or to our job. So uh, where would you like me to take a hurt goose? Should I go to some lady's house and say, I know I might have that disease that's invisible, yeah. but I got this goose. So I said, <laughs> I, I took it into my own hands and raised it and whatever. And he said, if you want to learn how to rehab geese, you need to go to school. And I said, well, if I can teach them to land in my hands, maybe I should teach the class. So anyway, <laughs> they, don't, they didn't like me. And they said, uh, so anyway, I took a lady flying with stage four cancer, a good friend of mine, Jamie Zenner. And we were f going, you know, 55 miles an hour. And she said, S this is the best effing day of my year. Slow down. We're going to die. And I said, you're going to die anyways. Just have fun. <laughs> well, then, uh, so the, in my mind, I had that, um, you know, oh, my God, cancer. I hate it. I hate it. Well, anyway, then the Fish and Wildlife took our goose away. 
They had national meetings about them. We had 40,000 signatures to give them back. And they just kind of disconnected their phone lines and did, ignored us. Did they show up to your house and no, like, he, take the goose? No, he flew away. And we thought he had got killed by a coyote. Well, he tried to get in someone's truck at 1030 at night. The guy was like, what are you doing? And he's so <laughs> used to riding in the truck. So that, that, that freaked the guy out. Well, then he called yeah. the, the police. And then I think they detained him. And then he's out committing B&Es. Y- yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, anyway, so then they would not give our goose back. So I had an artist draw a picture of a goose giving both middle feathers to the, the guy, and it said, go pluck yourself. So I, I had that negative thought for years and years and years, and then the, the negative thought of cancer. Well, then I bought Pablo from a game farm, so that's totally legal. We can keep it. Well, anyway, I was flying. I taught Pablo how to fly, and here comes two DNR guys, and the guy says, what are you doing? And I said, I'm flying with my goose. He goes, how do you know that's your goose? I said, well, he's sitting on my lap. And he goes, that is a good point. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to argue that one with you. Yeah. Well, then uh, I told him we have a goose from Siberia and told him about all the things we've done with our geese. And they each got out a notepad and took notes. They were two of the nicest game worms I've ever seen. And when they were all done, the guy says, to be honest, you were the most... Uh, most interesting person we pulled over today. <laughs> and it's like, I hope so. You yeah. know? <laughs> uh, that is so, well, yeah. What is, what is like the, the general reaction when, when you like have Pablo out ripping on the lake, do people on the lake like yeah, that yeah. you have them? Like, is it entertaining or do they see it as like sort of a now, bad thing? Now they all, uh, the ones that know, they all get their phones out and the ones that don't know, they're afraid for me. Because they think he's like and, attacking yeah, you. Yeah, and they think he's hurting me. Well, then they get their phones out and they film. And I mean, it's so neat. He, people hold them and everything, you know. And then some people even come on the jet ski and fly. We do it on Prior Lake. Well, anyway, Pablo taught himself how to come and land on the jet ski or land in my hands. I never taught him that. He has little goose syndrome. <laughs> if he can't touch the bottom, he's scared to death of the water. I think some sunfish scared him one time. So every time he has to land on the jet ski, and if we if we don't let him do that, then he still flies up and lands on, the, you know, like he, he just has to. Well, now he's taught our little, we have a Ross goose, which is a pure white goose with black tips on him. He taught him how to do that. And then we have a barnacle goose, which is from, uh, they can either be from Sweden or Iceland. And he taught him how to do it. So anyway... It sometimes you got to watch your so you don't get your eyes poked out because you got <laughs> it's like an airport on my head. You know? Claw on that, yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, how many how many geese how many waterfowl do you guys have? We have um, six or five geese, and then we have two ducks. And our little duck, he weighs like a half a pound, and he runs and jumps up on our dog's head and bites her by the <laughs> eyelids, and she stands up and he hangs on her like a wood tick, and then he just falls off. And she doesn't even know that. that have happened. you ever, you, uh, you, has, you said you have a dog. Have you ever had any other, like what people would consider to be normal pets other than a dog? Like the reason why I ask, how would you compare having waterfowl as pets to like a normal household pet, like a cat, a dog, a fish? Uh... Oh, they're, they're just way better, but it's so stressful because every time you go to the lake, you say your prayers that you're going to come home safely with them. Because eagles try to get them while you're mm. flying. Other boats can hit them. And sometimes they just randomly get up and fly away with other geese and stuff like that. One time, the little white goose thought he was a seagull, and he got in a flock of 6,000 seagulls. <laughs> That's and you're crazy. begging him to come back, but the seagulls aren't going to come to you. Right. Well, anyway. They uh, don't care. One time on September 11th, we have a red-breasted goose, and they're from Siberia. They're uh, endangered species. They're red, black, and white, the prettiest geese in the world. Well, they're the dumbest geese in the world. So our little goose got up and he flew and fl- she flew and flew and flew and would not land. So then we th- she disappeared and we thought she was dead. Three weeks later, we found her 36 miles away at Maplewood Mall. And we went up there and brought our other geese in the parking lot, fed the wild geese so they would stay close and not have our goose fly away. And I put out Lucy the Goosey, our really tame goose. And she walked over and beat up her sister and was like, where have you been? You've been on a bender. Like, you, 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 what, what's going on? You know what I mean? So then, uh, thank God she she's, distracted her. And She's I, just been out ripping for a few yeah. weeks, running away from home. You're probably pregnant. Like, what's going on? You know? <laughs> I, was, I was looking through a bunch of your content since 
Cody, I, I hadn't seen your videos, and then Cody's like, dude, you have to check out this channel. And the video that really got me is you come and you open up the gate, and then you walk out, and they're walking out with you, and then you jump on the four-wheeler and take off, and they're flying right next to you. And I was like, man, this guy's just living the life. Like, oh. they, they must, when you let them out, they must know, like, all right, we're going for a rip. Like, did yep. they just get so excited? Can yep. you see it? Like Pablo, he goes crazy, crazy, and honks. And anyway, but the thing is, this is a peaceful time of the year. In the spring, Pablo weighs three pounds, and you ask our mail lady. She wore like a, a bur- raspberry beret or whatever, whatever print said because he flew up and he landed on her head and <laughs> would not let go. And then uh, he gets a little bit of the hormones going. Really? Yeah. Do you notice a big change when, when like, normally they would be uh... – you know, migrating? Yes and no, because a lot of our local geese, they stay around here, you know? Okay. But, but anyway, like our little um, our little Frosty, the little white goose, he uh, flew away, and then we drove around for three hours, and we found him. So we clipped his wings. The next week he flew with two clipped wings, <laughs> and he landed in the middle of the 50-acre cornfield. And we crawled on our hands and knees for an hour and a half looking for him. Thank God my friend Mike and his son found him. So then we're like, you're in jail and you're not getting up. Well, <laughs> this year now, we tried fly with him, and he decided he wanted to keep going. He didn't like the, the, f- the field, the stubble hurt his feet, so he didn't want to land. He flew away. Well, I had to go get a colonoscopy, so I took the medicine. So I was pooping like a goose <laughs> in the ditch <laughs> while I'm out looking for a goose. <laughs> he Pablo, thinks it's hilarious. Let me let me finish the punchline, Pablo. You can't laugh yet. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, he he got the cue a little too early. <laughs> <laughs> so, he, he loves the story. So when, how often would you say when you go out? How often does one go missing? Is that a pretty rare occurrence, or is it something you're always on edge about? Always on edge, but once in a hundred times, you know, something happens. Our um, Never when we're actually flying. I went into my mom and dad's house. That's where we, they live on a lake. So that's where we uh, go flying. Well, on December 17th this year, my little barnacle goose, he was gone. I went outside and he was gone. And Pablo and Lucy the goosey are sitting next to the jet ski. Oh, so I go drive all over the lake. And I don't know if you know this about de- in December, when you go 60 miles an hour running around the lake, it's chilly. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So anyway, some places had ice on it and some didn't. So I could not find him. And they, that goose knows to come back to that house. So I thought, oh, did an eagle get it or whatever? Well, then we drove all over, you know, miles and miles in the truck. You go over to Shakopee and check at, at the park and then check other lakes. And anyway, then the lake, the next day, it was 18 degrees on the 18th. And y- have you ever tried to get frozen waders off? I was on the jet ski driving <laughs> 60 miles an hour. And then my waders were so frozen I couldn't get them off. And I wanted to cry because I, I thought my goose is gone. Well, on December 13th, I had saved a trumpeter swan on my jet ski on Prior Lake, gave it to the game warden, and he gave it to a rehab lady. Well, anyway, I, I, I text the rehab lady, and I said, how is the swan doing? And she said, I can't legally tell you. And I said, well, I'm the one who found it. And she <laughs> said, I can't, I can't tell you. So then I said, have you found any weird geese? And she said, send me a picture of a weird goose, which I thought, you know, she would say, no, I've never seen right. the goose. But she said, send a picture. And I sent a picture and she had it. Well, that goose had flown away and he had hit a fence a little bit and hurt his wing. He went into Berkshire Hathaway Realty on Monday morning. We lost him on Sunday. They let him stay in the lobby, <laughs> a goose pooping all over <laughs> for three hours in their lobby. So <laughs> shout out to Berkshire Hathaway in Savage, Minnesota. That was very kind of him, and we got our goose back. That's awesome. And we named that goose Indy, and he's because he's been independent since he was little. <laughs> how do you how do you get into having waterfowl as pets? Like, what was the very first one that you had? You know, when I, when I was little, I had we had a whole bunch of. My dad had them, so you can go to a game farm. And you buy them, and then, you know, you just tell the U.S. Fish and Wildlife what you have and uh, every year, and then the DNR, you tell them what you got, and then they can randomly come out and check on them if they want or whatever. But um, I don't even know what you asked, but <laughs> ADHD. 
Oh, uh, when you got started having waterfowl as pets. So when I was, what lit- was the first one. When I was little, I first had them. You know, my mom and dad had them, and then they're just like, "Oh my god, this kid's crazy." Well, then I wanted more and more and more. So then we got into white-tailed deer, then we got into elk, and then I got rid of all the geese because, um, you know, that's too much responsibility. <laughs> but since we're talking about elk, uh, we're going down the freeway one day, and a guy was blinking his lights at our at us, and my dad has a temper, and he said. Do you think you're a cop? What do you want? And the guy said, you just lost an elk off your trailer, sir. And <laughs> oh, that, man. If you want to feel stupid, have somebody tell you that. What What was that uh, What was that scene like? Did that elk make it? Or? Yep. So anyway. Oh, it did. Three days later. Uh, yeah, but it wasn't a good ending. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, he didn't even get hurt. Okay. He scun his legs up a little bit. So three days later, the state patrol called and said, your elk is down south of Oatana. Oh, you never got it. Oh, he no, because we it got up and it. Oh, it was went. gone. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, three days later, they said it's South Oatana. So anyway, we went down there. I had a tranquilizer gun, and then the state patrol told my friend, "You have a rifle. If it comes near the freeway, he, he can't go on the freeway." Mm. So anyway, he's laying on the hood of a state patrol got, car with the <laughs> rifle, oh my and I God. was chasing it, and it was state hunting land. And it was muzzleloader season. I have camouflage on. And I was running. Oh Everybody, my God. Was, all the people were screaming at me, where's your orange? And I said, have you seen the big elk? And they're like, he's huge. He went that way. So then I chased him, and then he ran towards the freeway. My friend had to shoot him. So it was a sad, sad oh my ending. Oh, God. But we couldn't. Uh, what a scary time to be tromping through state hunting land. Oh, yeah. I, it's <laughs> like you, you want to get shot, though, because you feel so stupid when all the state <laughs> patrol people are watching you. Anyway, so we had. We had uh, my dad had called the insurance and said, what kind of coverage do we have? And he said, two million coverage. And he said, oh, my God, if that would go through the windshield of a family of four, it would cost millions and millions to hurt 75 miles an hour. He said, can I add on insurance? And he said, oh, God, no. no. <laughs> so anyway, once my friend shot him, we called and said we took care of the problem. It was very sad, but thank God nobody got hurt. And the guy said, I'll send you a check. And we said, for what? And he said, well, your elk are insured for 15000 a piece if they get shot. And my dad said, well, we shot it. He goes, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, That's good insurance, <laughs> guys. So That's what you, you want on your side. The bull side. was only worth 2500 My dad's like, let's let a couple more go. <laughs> Pablo, it's not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> Pablo knows what's up. Yeah. Pablo doesn't get out much. I mean, it's like, it's, is this your first podcast, Pablo? He's on vacation. <laughs> I, I, want, I want to give some attention to Bean Boy over there real quick. He. Yeah. He's notoriously afraid of dogs, and I can see his eyes just staring down Pablo. Are you a little freaked out, buddy? No, I just can't believe there's a goose two feet away from me just <laughs> looking at me, dude. B-Boy, I forgot you were here. Usually they're trying to attack you and whatnot, but this, he's, I kind of want to pet him, but I don't want to at the same that's, time. I'm scared. That's one thing about going on golf courses my whole childhood. Like, yeah. The geese are scary there, man. So yeah. <laughs> I've been, I, or at Fonda Rosa, dude, as a kid, you ever go there before? <laughs> no, I never have. Oh, my God, dude. I've gotten chased around there. But <laughs> Pablo and I, we've made a nice connection. I think we're buddies at this point. I he, think, try, he tried to hit you earlier, I'm pretty sure, but he didn't get you. What What is the maintenance on having geese as pets look like? Are they, I know they like, they prune themselves, right? Preen, yeah, uh, prune themselves. Prune themselves? Yeah, so I mean, like... We have pens that are outside in our yard, and they're portables, you know, like, you know, 30 by 15 wide. So then the thing is, you just keep moving that, that's fine. Then we built a pen that has netting over the top, that's 50 by 100. So the thing is, that that just besides moving the pens and stuff in the summer, that's not too bad, you know, and just make sure you give them food. We put them in a shed at night because we don't want them to get killed. Well, anyway, now they're in the garage in the wintertime, and that's, oh, my God. Is it a nightmare? Well, not terrible, but you got to change the shavings and yeah. all that stuff. So we have a six-car garage, and we once in a while put one car in the garage, <laughs> and it's turned into a zoo for geese. Yeah. And, and my dad tells me, you know, like this is so stupid. You, you know, <laughs> what are you doing? And but when you love them, you love them like your little kid. Oh yeah, I would imagine. You know, it's like you, it's no different than than having a dog that you consider to be your kid or a cat that you love so much, or you know, you just. It's a it's a living breathing thing, you know, and it has its own personality. Obviously, we've learned that today. Pablo is absolutely a gentleman, as you said. Um, what would you say are some of like the the biggest 
differences in some of their personalities that like really make them individual. Pablo, he truly, truly thinks he's a human, and so does Lucy the Goosey. <laughs> okay. So our dog, you know, like um, when we butcher deer, we give our dog the leg bone. These guys go and take the bone away. They beat the heck out of the dog, <laughs> take the bone away, and stand on it and sit there and nibble at it just to show, like, this is ours. Yeah. And then the other ones, you know, they're they're more like Frosty. He's the Ross Goose. He's the, the pure white one. He's more like, you know, I know this is wrong. These people are trying to warp my mind. <laughs> I'm a goose. And then Indy is, you know, half human, half goose. That's the one from Sweden. And then uh, what do you call it? We have another one called Gertie, and she's truly Kramer from Seinfeld. <laughs> she has no idea what she's doing. She just, like, runs around the corner like, whoa, and, and almost runs into the wall. <laughs> you can have the open pen, and you try to put her away, and she, like, zigzags and then ends up bouncing off the side of the pen. You know, so, so we took her flying. Right away, five geese go this way because we, we had five ge- more. Well, anyway, five geese go this way, and she goes and lands in somebody's fenced-in yard, and it's like, did you not get the memo? You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, but Pablo, he truly, truly thinks he is a human, and he wants to be in the house. You know, like when he was little, we raised him in the house in a tote, and uh, anyway, he'd watch church with us, and he'd watch other shows with us and stuff, and uh, he truly thinks he's a He's a human. <laughs> yeah, he's like this cold shit in the garage sucks. I, I don't want to <laughs> be out here. I, and he likes gourmet lettuce. You know, in the winter time, he doesn't get to eat grass. Right. So then the thing is, uh, we gotta go get lettuce, and he'll nibble and be like, and he tosses it like. He'll only eat the high quality yeah, stuff. He's like, this is from the dollar menu. <laughs> what do they eat other than lettuce? Lots of grass in the summer, so then we feed him corn, and then there's protein pellets that are you know up to like eighteen percent protein, but they like corn the best. And then we would give them uh, oats and stuff. As, or Yeah, there was winter wheat and oats in there. But we had a couple of them choke, so then we kind of got rid of them. <laughs> I, they're, they're so spoiled that they don't even know how to eat like a goose. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, with, with dogs, you can really tell, you know, you can tell when they're excited. You can tell when they're sad, when they're happy. Can you, can you read the emotions with the geese? Like, can you kind of tell, like, Oh, Pablo's having a good day today, or can you like tell if they're upset about something? Is yep. So back when we had Peeps and Puddles, once Peeps got taken away, Puddles just acted. I mean, she was so sad, and just we thought she was sick. But anyway, we checked everything, and she took her to the vet, and she was totally fine. And she just got more and more depressed, and then uh, finally, just she flew away because uh. she wasn't happy, and we legally couldn't keep her in captivity anymore. So anyway. We uh, bought more geese, and anyway, then uh, two of them flew away, and she flew away with them, sure. and it's like, okay, fine. But, I mean, she was so sad, and it was terrible to watch. Well, what? so I, I know that's one of the, like, big things about uh, geese and swans and, uh, you know, what what's the whole deal with, uh, you know, mammals and geese or waterfowl are the only, you know, things that mate for life? Do you think that that plays something into like the bond that you get with these geese. Yeah, I yeah, I, it's tough to say. Like yeah. can they develop like friendships? Like are like they hang out with the other geese? There's preferences. Okay, so we had a wiener dog and now he's got old and died, but it's so funny cuz that wiener dog one time when I was goose hunting, I shot a goose. He swam out, grabbed the goose. And then the goose swam away with my dog in December, and I had to go chisel ice because where I needed to put the boat in, that was frozen. So I had to break the ice, go get my dog, and the goose oh swam God. 600 yards away with my, my dog. So anyway, that dog was an absolute killer. My Labrador was an absolute killer. Well, anyway, my daughter, Lana, we used to have to lock peeps up. Then we let the dog up. Then we locked the dog up and let peeps out, and she said, this is ridiculous. We need to train these two dogs. Not to hurt the goose. And I said, there's no chance. <laughs> and she said, I'm going to do it. She taught the dog, the wiener dog, and the other dog to leave the geese alone. So w- speaking of friendships, you would look out. There goes a wiener dog. He's trying to kill rabbits and God knows what. The other <laughs> dog is chasing everything. And then there's the train of geese heading across the field. And they're... They're hunting with the dogs, the geese. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's they, amazing. They, they, and then they see deer, and they think, you know, like they sit there and honk at the deer, and 
like they'll fly over there and try to attack the deer and, and tell them get out of their yard and it's like you're two pounds you're are they like territorial <laughs> for other people and animals that like come into your guys's place i know you said that there was a little bit of well, a conflict with the male lady during the breeding otherwise they love everybody but yeah during breeding pablo thinks he's big and he only weighs like three pounds <laughs> Anyway, uh, we made a little commercial one time with Pablo. He stands on my head, and then I held up the Pepto Bismol, and it said, "Pooping like a goose, try Pepto Bismol." You know. <laughs> anyway, uh, what do you call it? Um, I'm try- I, yeah, I can't even think anymore. <laughs> That's hilarious. How long have you been making like content that you guys have been posting online um, with? The geese. I know you said it started with peeps. Yep, in 2020. I didn't even know how to do any of that stuff. So, oh, I got so sick of begging. I'd beg the daughter when she would get home from work, can you show me how to do this? <laughs> and then I'd ask my son, and then, you know, they're just like, why don't you learn it yourself? And it's like, because I'm dumb. I, you know? <laughs> well, anyway. I can feel. I under, my dad has made me post everything on Facebook Marketplace he's ever wanted to post. And I'm like, just let me teach you. Yeah. No, no. Nah, I, I like when you do it. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> what do you think, Pablo? My little. <laughs> 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 He's so smart. He knows. He like understands the changes in the room. He um, one thing, Lucy the Goosey. Okay, so I don't know if any of your listeners hunt, but. One thing I learned when they ride in the car with you, there's, you know, $300 goose calls, and then there's like $30 or $40 goose call. Well, the, the expensive goose calls are actually dupli- duplicating female Canada geese vocals. And then the goose flute, the junker, duplicates a male. And I try to explain this to people, and then they're like, bro, you said Canadian goose. That's 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 <laughs> plural, and it's like I don't know. I said I'm not a professor. I'm just telling you, like, <laughs> but pe- it's unreal. And then on TikTok, you can't believe how many people say that they want to blow the goose out of the air. I, I dressed up like Santa Claus, and the geese are flying next to me, and the people tell me how they want to shoot them out of the air, and it's like, you know, what what's wrong with you? And then some of them are like, it's banded. It's like it's standing on my head. I would hope it's banded. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Yeah, I noticed that Pablo doesn't have a, a band. He doesn't have a, a bracelet. No, but see, on his left foot, his back toe is clipped. Or one of them is clipped. Oh, yeah, the right side. Yep. yep. So you either legally have to clip them when they're born, that little toe, mm-hmm. or give us a band. Well, the guy, never, I never knew that was an option. Mm. So he's clipped. But all the rest of them, you put a band on after like four or five days, once their feet are big enough, and then it's a sealed band that can never come off. And that shows like, hey, this is not from the wild. So mm, yeah, that makes sense. Um, you ever thought about hooking Pablo up with maybe some ice, maybe a little watch or something? Oh, we we, we want to get him. A, we're gonna get him some cute bling, and then uh, what do you call it? Uh, we, we're trying to get it a GPS thing. Oh, but see, that'd be nice. There's something that you can put on him, but you can only find him a mile away. Mm. The guy says, "But if you get an airplane." <laughs> You can track them 15 miles away. I'm like, oh, I should go get an airplane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's the easy fix. <laughs> <laughs> can is there a, an air tag accessory that you can put on his leg? Too? Yeah, but see, they got to be collar. within 30 to 100 feet of people. And the thing is, you look how big a pond is, and then it, it probably yeah. But I would, I mean, we want to try anything because, I mean, when you spend days driving around in a car, you talk about feeling helpless. Oh, I would imagine. And some people smart off, and they say that's that's goose yoga right there. <laughs> Strike a He's pose. stretching out. Yep. What's what's the life expectancy of a goose? Uh, they can live up to thirty years. Oh, wow. wow! I Shit. had no clue that. No. I was How thinking old is Pablo? maybe seven. Pablo's years? two and a half. You got a long time, buddy. You got a long life ahead of you, buddy. Pablo's very tame. Well, one time I went to the bank, and I was going to bring him in to show him because they let you bring pets. State Bank of Fairbo and Prior Lake. I walked in, set him down at the door, was going to let him walk in. He saw the big flag, and it scared him. He flew across Highway 13, which is a crazy busy highway, <laughs> right between two cars. And I'm like, oh, please, God, no, 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 no. So anyway, then he flew, and he was up, and he went through the power lines, and that power lines kill lots of birds. 
Well, then he flew a mile away, and I thought he was gone. And the little girl that works at the bank, the teller, came out, and she says, oh, my God, you're a goose. I'm so sorry, because she knew I was bringing it into shore. And we were both ready to cry. And all of a sudden, here I look, and there's Pablo, like, 400 yards high, and he comes through the power lines, <laughs> and he landed right there. And she's like, he, he, he came back. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I grabbed him and put him in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> nope. They ride in the truck, and then when we uh, go get our oil changed, the people they think we're crazy. <laughs> yeah, I saw a couple of videos <laughs> of you uh, bringing him to um, through the drive-through at oh, the fast mean, food places. Yeah, do they love that? What What is their reaction when I, they see the? I bent piece? over and laughed so hard, but I said, "Can I get some extra napkins?" The goose <laughs> crapped on my lap, and they're <laughs> like, oh. and it, "It's real. <laughs> it's real." Can I tell you a couple? Of, I know I talk way too much. No, you're good. Okay, here is okay. We got these geese. They fly alongside the four-wheeler for the people that don't understand, that haven't seen this. But anyway, this is what I said to Mall of America. I, I used to own the Dairy Queen there. I said, would you let me? Let's get – this would be a great scene for Mall Cops 3. <laughs> what if Paul Blart was on a Segway? I was on my four-wheeler, and I'm flying, driving through Mall of America with my geese flying alongside me, and Paul Blart is on a Segway chasing me. What a scene for Mall Cop 3, you know? <laughs> I can't even imagine. <laughs> well, anyway, then I thought of this commercial. I can't get a hold of Allstate, but I want to get a hold of Allstate. And, you know, the mayhem guy. Mm. What if he had Pablo standing on his head and he said, I'm a famous TikToker just trying to enjoy my 15 minutes of feathered fame, but I'm about to goose up your day. <laughs> and then have me, they, they could pretend it's him, but have me driving my four-wheeler through a red light with all my geese flying alongside, the police chasing me, and then they hit each other. <laughs> and then he could say, don't get plucked by cut-rate car insurance. Get better protected from mayhem, like me. And then Pablo could poop on his head or something. And finish Dude, I think you got to put together a pitch deck. This is a sponsorship deal that peeps that the, the peeps page needs. You know, I think like you got some real good ad ideas on your hands right now. That's what happens when you have no friends. You think of all this <laughs> stuff. You know what I mean? But the other one I thought of is, you know, what if I, okay, so when I'm flying on the jet or driving on the jet ski, the geese are right in front of me. I can have their butts right in my face if I want. So just think for a farmer's insurance commercial, if you were filming through my sunglasses and the geese's butts are right there <laughs> and all of a sudden one of them poops on the glasses and you can't <laughs> see. And then I hit a boathouse or hit a dock, and then he could say, goose crap, we covered that. You know, we've seen blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he could do, they could do bump, 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 or whatever, and then Pablo could go crazy honking. And then it would be I a like good this. Commercial. You should just start filming these and putting their names on it and just seeing if any of them will respond to you. I bet you get paid for some of these. I'd love, yeah. I mean, I would just love to uh, try it, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Because... Yeah, just start doing it. Just start doing it. That that'd be actually be really entertaining. <laughs> so, so our our beloved Bean Boy over here, he actually has. You have ducks and geese, right? No geese, just ducks and turkeys and chickens and quail and rabbits. Oh. So let's say, you know, let's say maybe he wanted to train one of his ducks or he got geese. Do you have any like really beginner tips to start training your your geese? Yep, like uh, you know, if you have, we tried it with two ducks and then it didn't work. But if you take them from babies. And just have them follow you around and just say, ready, ready, ready. And then they followed us around in the house and then out in the yard, ready, ready, ready. And then uh, the four-wheeler, it's just weird that they know that command word. And and uh, but the problem is you need a lot of safe land to practice with the four-wheeler because yeah. if you go down the road, they can hit power lines and you know cars and that kind of stuff. You want a safe place for where they're used to landing and stuff. And the lake was great when there's no boats. You know what I mean. That, mm -hmm. But I mean, I I don't know if I don't know if the DNR loves them. <laughs> like the, you know, the the thing is, thousands and thousands of people enjoy it, and it's not hurting anything, and it's something truly innocent. Anyway, do you remember when we first started? I said uh, I took my friend Jamie Zenner, who had stage four cancer, flying, and then my sister's neighbor. I don't even know the lady's name, but uh, I talked to her, and she said where'd you get the kite? And I said, what kite? And she said, that <laughs> kite. And I said, what one? She goes, the one that looks like a goose. And I said, it is a goose. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, no. She said, I've told people how you pull this kite alongside a jet ski. And I just don't know, wh like, why do you do that? And I said, that's a goose. And she goes, no, it looks real. <laughs> well, anyway, 
I didn't know she had stage four cancer as well. And I think that's why she couldn't see very well. Well, then in the winter time, I was going out there on my four-wheeler unloading the geese and her sister stopped and said, my sister crawls to the window every time you uh, fly with your geese. And I said, uh, why does she crawl to the window? She can just stand up. They aren't afraid. She won't scare them. And she said, well, she, she's dying. And I said, that lady that I talk to all the time. And she said, yeah. Well, anyway, so then I got yelled at by the fish and wildlife. And they told me, you know, like, stop traveling with your geese. They would have let me keep the geese if I did not go to the lake and fly with them. Well, then I said, I can't bring the uh, sick people to the geese. So I bring the, the geese to the sick people. So anyway, then if how good pe can people see this shirt? Pluck cancer. Anyway, if you, if you look at this shirt, it's a it says pluck cancer. We're gonna try to start a nonprofit, you know, called pluck cancer, and the word pluck means to quickly remove. At first, it was supposed to be the negative from telling the fish and wildlife to go pluck themselves, <laughs> and then the thing is, in my mind, I thought of cancer all those years, and then we want to try to do a nonprofit, you know, and sell these shirts and sell hats, and if you look, the goose is praying because that's probably better than medicine praying and things like that well anyway um we want to try to do a goose race called flight for the cure where everybody would bet on the race like if you know say pablo wins the money would go to nancy in savage with cancer if lucy the goosey wins then denise from savage gets some or whatever you know what i mean we're going to figure out something like that but all bets would be do donations but the thing is that's something that's new and it can be repeated, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it sounds crazy, but I mean, you look at what, what is race for the cure. That's, right. that's a marathon, like, right. you know, and a goose race has never been done in history. So anyway, Canterbury Downs, please let us come. I know we, we, we went there in practice, and now they think we're crazy since we, <laughs> we were bad boys because we, you know, wrote, go pluck yourself to the fish and wildlife. That was what got you uh, to not be well, able to practice at Canterbury anymore? Well, the goose got taken away, and then all of a sudden we were just outcasts, you know? Oh, I mean? and then they're like, oh, hey, whoa, 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 why did it get taken away? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I felt like Martha Stewart with an ankle bracelet, you know, just <laughs> yeah. uncomfortable in the yeah. kitchen, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that would be the Pluck Cancer Movement. That That's a great cause, and I'm just, I'm really interested to hear how, how does a goose race start, and like, how is it, you doing laps around the track? How do, how is this going to be arranged? Because I'm very intrigued by the thought of a goose race. Well, I mean, probably just one good uh, full mile lap around there, you know what I mean? And the thing is, uh, otherwise you could do it at the lake, you know what I mean? It won't, they won't be exactly right on a line starting, but the thing is, you know, you can just have a start and stop. The lake is the safest place yeah. if they won't do it, you know what I mean? So I was going to talk to the mayor of Prior Lake and say, hey, like, let's get something like this and let's put Prior Lake... You know, Prior Lake's already on the map for a lot of things, but I mean that would be neat. Like, it's the first official goose race would be pretty neat. You know? That would be awesome. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, crazy be awesome to witness. Yeah. Hey, let us know whenever you're doing it. Keep us in the loop because we'll bring a pontoon down. We'll we'll <laughs> we'll be on the lake with you. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll we can we can we'll, commentate. If yeah, you we'll need. do a, a live broadcast <laughs> of the race. I would I would I can't miss it. I would miss it for the world, <laughs> especially Pablo. My money's on you, buddy. No, it, the thing is, honestly, if you were going to bet, Indy, it, it, she, he, he, is, he was supposed to be a girl. He was maybe going to be a mate for Pablo. It's the wrong kind of goose, but it was supposed to probably be his little girlfriend. <laughs> and then I think it's a boy, so they beat each other up all the time. But Indy <laughs> always has to be like 40 yards ahead of everybody. It's not that he's faster. It's just that he wants to be the leader. Mm. So if, if there is a goose race, I would bet on him. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. You got the insight on uh, on the uh, winner. You know, this is sort of like, you know, when you're uh, at the horse races and in the stables and, you know, they get like a, a tip from someone that like, hey, this one I know is going to be a little bit faster. <laughs> hey, take sparkles. He's been hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, one thing that I was curious about. So like, so Bean Boy, he has different sorts of birds and like, turkeys especially they would they would beat the shit out of one of them and then like basically kill it or get it pretty close and they were, they would like pick out one bird to be mean to do you have problems with your geese like fighting each other and yeah yeah lucy the goosey she's a full-size canadian honker so she's like 12 pounds oh she's big yeah so she uh, 12. 
<laughs> <laughs> so she beats up everybody, you know, and that's, I get so mad at her, but, you know, <laughs> the, that is the uh, pecking order, I guess, you know. <laughs> that's funny. Anyway, there's this, you know, on social media, you get jealous people, right? Yeah. So I, so I put a video on concerned citizens of Savage, and obviously riding a jet ski with geese in December has nothing to do with like, hey, I lost my dog or whatever. So this miserable guy, he has a picture of his Suburban and that's it. And he just bitches about everybody. So anyway, he goes, you're going to die. And I said, why am I going to die? And he said, you're on a jet ski in December. And I said, oh, what page is that in the handbook? You know? And I said, why would I die? And he says, well, you're on a jet ski in December. What if you fall off? And I said, well, the thing is, I'm very coordinated and I've never fallen off in the summer. So I don't plan on falling off. That day I was out there and it was like 21 degrees. And your eyes water. They pulled all the buoys out, marking rocks, and I almost hit one of the oh, rocks. Oh, damn! So I almost <laughs> flew off the jet ski. Well, anyway, then this year when I did lose Indy, I was going 60 miles an hour, which you're not supposed to. But it, when there's nobody else dumb enough to be out there in December, well, I did hit a rock, and thank God I didn't go flying off. Well, anyway, one time there in the summer there was wake boats out there, and I stood up so that I wouldn't, uh, you know, because my back I've hurt it and whatever. I didn't want to bounce. I went bounce, bounce, and then I hit the next wave, and I flew off the head first off the jet ski, <laughs> and I have waders on, and then the jet ski hit me and cut my leg open. Oh, my Ooh. God. And then it, I don't have the cord on like you're supposed to. So then it, it <laughs> came back and almost ran me over, and th this pontoon, they're just like, oh, look at the geese. They landed next to him. It's like, what about the guy that needs a hospital? Oh, my God. I need an ambulance, you know? <laughs> Pablo remembers it like it was yesterday. He's like, man, that was a wild day. He's like, use the tether cord, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how come you don't use the tether cord when I, you're on there? Well, a lot of times I'm either, you know, you sometimes you're filming or grabbing. You know, <laughs> 66 <laughs> miles an hour and then filming. Yeah, It's uh, too inconvenient. Yeah. It's, it's, this is called duck-stracted driving. So you know what I mean? <laughs> Except yeah. with geese. But. Uh, when, when you're flying, do you ever have, like... Like a solo goose just come join the flock or anything like that? Do you ever have birds join in on you? Kind of, you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, but then they realize, like, this guy's a lunatic. You know, and then they, they <laughs> like, there's something it. else going they're on. They're like, here. oh shit, this is actually a cult. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, oh, the outsiders are back, dude. We better get <laughs> out of here. I don't totally understand goose vocals, but it sounded like he was asking Pablo, did you live under power lines when you were little? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> What are you doing? You're so what the hell is going on? Why are we following this guy? But it, it's uh, what's so funny is our they they get sick of flying. Lucy the goosey, she'll go and then all of a sudden she's like, "That's it, we'll be going." She'll catch the wind, and they almost go backwards behind you, and they're gone, and they go home. And I'm like, "No, there is people that I promised at the other side of the lake that we mm. have to go show." And I get out in front of them. And I mean, I, I can grab Pablo out of the air. I can grab um, Rosie out of there and then uh, Frosty out of there. And like even uh, Indy, th th their neck, they're flying. And I just put my hand up like this and I can like almost redirect them. <laughs> but anyway, I try that with her and she's like, no chance. And she just catches the wind and gone like a kite and goes home. And it's like, we have people waiting. So when they are not in the mood, they don't want to fly. They go home and they want to. <laughs> That's so crazy. They want to play in the water. I would have never guessed that they have like such strong personalities. Oh, a hundred percent, dude. That's one thing I, I definitely judged a book by its cover. Like I just thought, I, I mean, I, I don't want to say I thought geese were dumb, but I definitely didn't think they were smart. You know, I didn't, I didn't give them the credit that I now understand. Like these things are some amazing <laughs> creatures. I mean, he's doing yoga. <laughs> you know, of course he's smart. <laughs> he's laughing <laughs> like just he he always cuts in with his laugh at the perfect time. I mean, this man. It's a genius. Do your uh, turkey see their reflection in the car and then want to fight with it? No, I don't even want to bring them in the car. That'd be a disaster. No, yeah, but they like they see their oh, reflection. Oh, yeah, they chase the cars and they peck at it. And yeah, it's bad. <laughs> Do you have problems loop. with that? They'll see their reflection oh, and then yeah. just start hitting the car? Not hitting, but Pablo, he sits there and talks to him and it's like, <laughs> Pablo, <laughs> like I know the male lady <laughs> left and she was pretty, but the car, you know, he thinks he's talking to another goose and it's like, <laughs> you're not. Yeah, it's like you're being real quiet today. What do they do at home when you have them like out of their uh, their cage, their pen? They run around, and then if they do see deer, then they want to go and try. And we have to go interrupt because the thing is, you know, uh, 
eagles try to get them and then coyotes. So uh, they run loose it until they're naughty, and then we got to lock them up for a while, and then uh, um, we'll run around with them. Like, they love to garden. So the wife takes them in the garden, and they pull all the weeds. <laughs> really? Yeah, but then they might, they'll bite in the butt and stuff like that, and then it's not as fun anymore, you know what I mean? <laughs> th- th- but they hate Crocs. They can't stand Crocs, so if she like has the cro- shoes, oh, Crocs? I hate them. Really? Dang, I'm glad I didn't wear Crocs yeah. today. <laughs> they, they sell mini Crocs for geese yeah. because they love to pick them up, but they don't like the little ones. They want the big ones because they know that belongs to somebody. So anyway, um, in our garage, the other day I could not find one of the geese. I was running all over looking, and I thought for some reason Lucy the Goosey had flown away. The dog took a bone in there, so she was r- inside the doghouse, and the poor dog was sleeping on the floor. Well, I <laughs> ran all over, and then finally she comes walking out, and then all of a sudden I hear her. She's sitting there walking backwards trying to drag the bone out <laughs> to show me, like, I just kicked the dog's butt and got the- <laughs> That's crazy. Look what I got, Dad. Yep. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's oh, man, hilarious. I'm so impressed. This Beans, you got to train some of your turkeys. we got to get a turkey in here. From, you got to start from when they're little, though. I know. I plan on having raising up some this summer. The spring, actually, and some ducks. So I'm actually going to try to give it a go. Yeah, Did you get one pregnant already? <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. got a couple months, and they'll be here. They've got them on the way. Don't feel bad. If you identify as a turkey, I mean, the, the teacher hey, yeah, at Prior Lake. Yeah, I identify as a pine tree, so I don't know. <laughs> the teacher at uh, Prior Lake is a dog, and my brother-in-law called and said, I think that's ridiculous, and then they yelled at him and said he's just unaccepting of others. Was he oh uh, my God. sleeping with dogs? Is that the whole deal? Is that why he identifies as a dog? No, it's, it's a lady, and she wears. Oh, a it's do- a lady. She wears a dog mask. Oh, a actually, it's one yeah. of those kind of situations. Yeah, oh, and my okay. brother-in-law said, "Can she oh, please just God. not?" As she, a teacher. Yeah, she's the teacher. Wow. Can she please leave at home? And they just said no. <laughs> they said you're unaccepting yeah. of others. Yeah, that that's something. Uh, you know, I'm I'm good at holding my tongue on certain things. That's that's so fucked up. I can't even sit here and. <laughs> the thing I is, mean, holy <laughs> shit! Like, look at Mall of America wouldn't let me. You know, identify as a goose on a four wheeler drive, and so. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I I knew furries were kids around the school. I never imagined a teacher furry. That is next level shit. Yeah, I've heard of like the 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 ca- the litter boxes being implemented in some of the schools, but I hadn't heard of people thinking that they Can were. You dogs. Imagine you see your teacher like digging <laughs> in the little litter box a little Dude. bit. I, as is this is this a elementary school, high school, middle no, school? No, middle school. I couldn't uh, imagine because middle school kids are savage. How is how are how is she not getting bullied by the students every day? I don't know. I, I mean, think... kids are savage. They will say whatever. Dude, I... well, the students would get in trouble. If True. you're talking to a teacher like that, that's how messed up it is. <laughs> Can you well, imagine if there was a teacher that like teacher. that in our area? I uh, my my good buddy, he tells me one day he's like, "Did you see at the North Branch school they made it all gay at the front? They put rainbow." And I'm like, what? I drive by there. It's literally like color crayon type of colors up <laughs> up front of the elementary school. Not gay pride whatsoever. But he's like, this needs to end gay pride in front of the school. Like I'm Jesus. like, what the fuck? But it was nothing. This? I can't imagine what people would say. Wow, that's crazy. That blew my mind. I've, I've never... Can't, that, I can't believe that. <laughs> I, asked the, I asked the savage police to do a fake... Uh, high speed chase with me and you know you would film from oh. from the car forward mm-hmm. you know one one person would be filming from the car forward and then one from the four wheeler back at the cop that's doing the fake high speed chase and we're not really going fast you know with the geese flying alongside the four wheeler well anyway they this was back in 2021 and they said oh no we we, we already have a Bad eye with the public. We're not doing anything like that, you know, because <laughs> yeah. George Floyd yeah. and all that stuff. Yep. Bad timing. Well, the funny thing is that was in the fall, and they said, no, we can't do that. Well, then I was out on a four-wheeler skiing behind the four-wheeler with the geese flying <laughs> alongside me. Here comes the police on a snowmobile chasing us down, <laughs> and they're like, this is against the law. And I said, what? And he says, you can't do it. You can't pull somebody behind a, a four-wheeler. And I said, how is this any different than water skiing? I think this is legal. Nope, nope, nope. And they were very nice. And they're like, by the way, we love your geese and whatever. So anyway, we a- we actually got that high speed chase on film. Oh, you did? Yeah, pretty good. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's awesome. But anyway, then uh, I called the DNR and I'm like, yeah, I'm that idiot with the geese that you took away. Uh, can you ski behind a foiler? And they said, yeah, absolutely. You cannot pull a sled 
because a sled does not have a way to stop itself. But if you're on skis, you have a way to stop yourself. So it was legal. So then we actually got to go out there and make more videos, <laughs> skiing with the geese. <laughs> that oh, is awesome. wild. Well, he, what kind of what kind of outfits do you have that you uh, do some of these videos with the geese with? I know you have like a Santa Claus outfit. I bought uh, on December 17th. I lost that goose. And on the 18th, my brother-in-law, he doesn't like the geese. And it was his way to rub it in. He goes, well, you're finally taking the jet ski out for the year? We've taken it out many times because it froze and unthawed and froze and unthawed. And then I said, I don't think I'm done. This was on the 18th, and it was 18 degrees, and the lake was going to freeze for, for sure. I said, I'll probably be dressed up like Santa with my geese flying alongside on Christmas Day. And he's like, what? And I said, well, it's going to be 50, and I see it's going to rain before that. I hope that opens the lake up. Well, then it looked like there was no chance. So then I actually got to do it on Christmas Day, dressed up like Santa Claus with all the geese flying. Anyway, so then there's some know-it-alls on TikTok, and the guy's like, this is not real. Look at how his beard doesn't move. I'm like, <laughs> Buddy, do you know how many times my hat flew off in the lake and I had to put a wet hat on in December? It was so cold. <laughs> it's real. But he goes, well, the he goes, I don't know if this video is legit. I'm like, well, then look at the other videos. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, then I dressed up like a goose. My wife made Halloween costumes. And uh, we, we, we made a video of them driving around trick-or-treating. And then we had peeps and puddles in the car. And anyway, all of a sudden this person says, that is racist. That is blackface. It's like they have a beak on and there's two <laughs> geese in the car. So then the African Amer <laughs> the African American people are like, shut your mouth. You, you know what I mean? Because you are, are they, you know, like, first of all, are you black? And then, then they didn't have an answer for it. And they said they are just goosing around. Well, everybody started fighting about that. And then all of a sudden it got 1.6 million views. So then I told my wife next year, I'm going to dress up like a goose and go fly and we made a really really good video but she's like i worked hard on them costumes and i don't want you taking it out on the lake and it's like what is it doing it's sitting in the thing doing nothing let me dress up <laughs> i went to the gas station and the people are like you need help for sure. <laughs> full beak on you're you're in, like you have the beak on at the gas station and you oh just... yeah full full goose mode you know <laughs> that's awesome man i love how much you've embraced the goose life like, i told I... I said it's okay i'm a teacher at prior lake you know what i mean my, my <laughs> wife's a cat <laughs> or a, do a dog <laughs> oh, my wife's fuck. a dog i'm a goose <laughs> these are our children <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm. now you can't make now you can't say anything now you can't make fun of me Sam <laughs> I've I've been just Pablo and I are friends from a distance right now. I'm still he's flicking you off up. right now. Talk to the beak. He's got <laughs> his middle. Is it what toenail? What is, I mean, what is, what is that called on a goose? <laughs> I'm I'm not a biologist. I'd call it toenail. No, I, well, I, I think <laughs> it looks like. According to Bean Boy, it's a toenail. He's pa he's pointing his middle toenail right at you. He's flicking you off. Pablo, brother, thanks for coming on. We really appreciate you guys dropping by, gracing us with your presence. I think um, this summer, I think we got to go rip out on Prior Lake. We got to go rip around yeah, with you. Sure. I've got to be see so this fun. Person. Yeah. It'd be so fun. <laughs> I kind of want to get a goose now. <laughs> yeah, this would be awesome. These cacklers are the best ones. Cacklers. They're the tamest and they're the uh, calmest. You know. I'm sure I can make a diaper for it for the house. Such a little buddy. You got to get. Like those dog pads people have, get a little dog pad down for them. You can make your work. A little puppy pad. Can they smell good? They have good nah, scent. Not, not, not really. No, they no. stink. They <laughs> poop oh, reeks. No, I'm saying, like, do they smell? Like, can they? Oh. Like, do they have the ability to smell? <laughs> <laughs> well, Ron, thank you so much for coming on. I, I respect anyone with such a passion, and I love that this is your passion. Thank you so much for sharing it with us and our fans and. This was great. I learned so much today. I appreciate it. Yeah, where can they find you on socials? Where can they follow you? Um, at Tell Us More Ron. Uh, Got it. Uh, and Peeps the Goose on TikTok. Well, on TikTok, it's at Tell Us More Ron. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah, and then it Peeps the We goofed up. And we never got any followers with Peeps the Goose, and we don't even know how to get into that account. To <laughs> oh, no. So it, it's, it's at Tell Us More Ron. And the reason why... I came up with that is because I'm writing a book about my life, all the crazy, insane things. Okay. And it's called Tell Us More, Ron, because I'm a moron, you know. 
Oh, yeah, I like yeah, that. I, I like that. It was going right over my dumb brain at first. <laughs> awesome. Thanks oh, yeah. so much, Beans. You got any closing words for us, buddy? No, I just th- I'm getting a goose now. That's for sure. <laughs> you sold them. Yeah. Can I tell you a funny story about Mall of America real quick? Yes, oh, absolutely. absolutely. Um, this lady, I used to do stand-up comedy upstairs. So anyway, I said, uh, I own the Dairy Queen downstairs, and Dairy Queen asked me to come up with some new greetings. Welcome to Dairy Queen. If you think my prices are high, you should see Carlos. And I don't know why they call it a cooler, because he used it like a hot box last Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, working at Dairy Queen, I hear all sorts of things like, baby, how much one of them hot dogs? <laughs> hot dogs are... Th- <laughs> Hot dogs are three fifteen. Three fifteen. It better be attached to a man. Three dollar fifteen cents. I got like forty cents worth of hot dog today because it's kind of cold outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, Pablo loved it. Knocked the crowd dead. <laughs> Pablo is a little late with this last one. We gotta work. <laughs> we gotta work on the timing. <laughs> the delivery. Yeah. Uh, well, guys, thanks for coming. We appreciate it, Pablo. Thanks thank for you, the invite. brother. Do you have any uh, closing statements to make? Say thank you, Pablo. Say thank you. Where's your manners? <laughs> I think nodding. he wants to fight the mic. He was nodding. He gave it a good look. We'll see you next week. That was his drop in the mic right there. <laughs> <laughs>